If Uncharted 2 and 3 were so great, then what the hell is Uncharted 4? The Uncharted franchise is, dare I say, my favorite. So when I say that Uncharted 4 is my favorite in the franchise, that truly means something grand. I really loved Uncharted 2 and 3, so the fact that I really enjoyed Uncharted 4 more means what? No, seriously, what does it mean? Aside from a few moments, the game takes place a few years after the events of Uncharted 3. This might come as a shock, but Drake and Lena actually got married. After all the craziness that happened in their past adventures, the couple decide that they want to live a normal life. But, fuck that. <laughs> Drake's brother, Sam, returns to his brother to seek help to find the great treasure of Henry Avery because his life is on the line. And yeah, that's basically your main goal all throughout the game, but I'm gonna return to the story later. For now, let me just use some time to justify why this game is just so goddamn great. Just look at the combat from the other games in the series. Then compare it to this. Holy sh- oh my god! Not only is the combat more satisfying, but it's way more realistic. Like, who the hell fights like this in real life? But Uncharted 4 is better paced to how real fights would be, and that sort of pacing is way better because it makes the hits way more challenging and satisfying. The other games in the franchise gave you so much time to react, which overall just really erased a bunch of the satisfaction and difficulty when it comes to the combat. I know they wanted to make the combat look more dynamic, but they had to sacrifice a bit of that fun factor in order to make the combat look cool. Regardless, Uncharted 4's combat is really fun and is really nice to look at anyway. But there's something that would technically be the combat that I really need to talk about. The Jump Attack it was introduced in Uncharted 3, but it was barely used. In that game, you could've just performed the attack when the game told you you could perform it, and that happened quite rarely. But in Uncharted 4, all you need is some high enough ground and a jump. That's it. In Uncharted 4, it's overall pretty gratifying to pull off these attacks. Like, just look at this. And this. Okay, okay, we got it, it's pretty cool. Now for the previous one, I was actually referring to the grappling hook. The platforming. I'm actually one of those people that actually liked the platforming in the previous games. These moments sometimes lead to some excellent dialogue and presentation. Uh, great ass, Sully. I agree, but I really have to say that I don't really love these moments. Believe me, I still like these moments, but if someone comes up to me and asks why I like Uncharted 2, I'm not really going to talk about the platforming. But with Uncharted 4, it's quite a different story, and that's thanks to some great new mechanics. Like the sliding. The slide is nothing much, but it does feel good to perform. It's often followed by a jump, which always has to be timed, which adds a lot of difficulty and engagement to the game. So yeah, it is of course very, very great. Similar to the baton. The baton gives Drake a bit more liberty while climbing. What I love about this item is that you actually have to time it right, and when you do, it feels also great. But is it as good as the grappling hook? What a dumb question. It's just so, oh my god, it is just so good. It feels like set. So yeah, the puffer mink is indeed very astounding. But you want to see something stunningly great? You're looking at it right now. Just name me three games on the PS4 that look as good as this game. I'm waiting. Like the PS3 Uncharted, Uncharted 4 is really just pushing the hardware with what it could do. But not only is the game really stunning, but look at this. Yes, smooth transitions between cutscenes and gameplay. Well, oh wait, it's a bit too smooth. And they're able to do this because this game's cutscenes are all in-game. Yes, nothing is pre-rendered. And that's honestly very impressive that they still look that incredible. And to be honest, these transitions really increased my overall opinion of the game. These transitions make the game feel way more connected in a way. It feels much less like you're playing a game then you watch a cutscene. The game feels way more conjoined, which is of course nothing less than positive. But other than the fantastic graphics, platforming, and combat, what else does this game have? The music! In the other games, the music was actually good. There is honestly a lot of notable tracks. But overall, these soundtracks kind of lack in overall power and emotion. In the other games, the main source of emotion and amazement was more so the presentation and the story. But that is not true in this game, or more so, it is just partially true. In this game, that would be those two, plus the music. Uncharted 4 frequently offers music that's just filled with emotion. Seriously, just play this game and appreciate the music. But you know what else you should appreciate? 
the goddamn story. I really like the story in the other games, but compared to this game, it's not even a competition. Heck, it's so great that I would recommend that you skip to this time if you haven't played the game. Yes, I am willing to sacrifice my watch time. Like I said, after the events of Uncharted 3, Drake and Alina are now married. And they wish to live that married life normally, instead of living like this. But here's the problem. Drake's brother Sam supposedly needs to find Henry Avery's lost treasure because he's kind of forced to. A man called Alcazar is actually threatening to end his life if he doesn't. So Drake goes on to help him, and the two brothers go on a quest to get the treasure. But Alina is not really informed about this. She is still suspicious that something is happening, but that doesn't matter for now. Of course, this is Uncharted so they don't simply get the treasure, because not only do they actually have to find the treasure, but uh oh, they have competition. And the opposition here would be Nadine and Rafe. And halfway through the brothers quest to get the treasures, uh oh, Alina finds out the truth so there is this kind of conflict between the couple. But Drake, still willing to save his brother, still goes on to get the treasure. But Sam was a lying bastard! Sam lied about Alcazar. He was trying to get the treasure for other reasons. After that lie, Drake falls off a cliff, but Alina saves him. And then the couple tries to save Sam, but he doesn't want to be saved, and then holy sh**. <laughs> so yeah, that's a sort of summary of the game's story. And the story is indeed quite amazing. I really adore how in this game, Drake has an actual motive for why he actually wants to get the treasure. Yes, you can still see that he's very engaged with the overall adventure, which makes sense considering that he is made for this, but the motive is still there and the motive is good. Now, let's talk about this. You lied to me. For weeks. In regards to that, I must say that I heard something really dumb about it on the internet. Drake and Alina's conflict is immediately solved. What? It takes many chapters for Alina to actually fully forgive Nate. Yes, Alina goes after Drake and saves him, but like she said, she almost didn't. In part, it was because of those marriage vows. She was kind of forced to. And if that wasn't enough, the couple even described their vows as for better or for worse. Hmm. What do you think they mean by for worse? Plus, imagine this. You're in this sort of place trying to save your husband's brother. What would you do? Apparently, Alina has to show her full feelings at Drake. So no, the conflict between the married couple is not immediately solved. And yes, the whole plot point with that is pretty interesting. But there is a plot point which is even more interesting. And that would be... Sam's betrayal. First of all, it was a pretty good twist. Because not only did the lie have little holes, but you played a lot. So even if you'd find something suspicious, you wouldn't think it's a lie considering that you played a whole chapter that proved what Sam said. Which makes the plot twist way more astonishing. But something I really like is how the game redeems Sam. After his betrayal, some people might think that he's a total dick. But you play a whole chapter that justifies why he wants to get the treasure. Sam is not doing this because ooh, treasure, but because he wants to continue what his mother had done. Which gave him a great motive as well. So yes, you get it, I love the story. But I also love, I really love the auction and what's after it. The whole encounter with Nadine is just so awesome. And plus, this is the first time in the game where you see Victor Goddamn Sullivan. So yeah, this part of the game is automatically amazing. The Uncharted franchise is primarily linear. But this game also features segments that are quite open. For example, in Madagascar's open world, there are many different paths that you could take. And those routes lead to some different encounters, which is very amazing. But there is one section of the game, one who is so great that I might as well say that it's when the game peaked. I'm talking about Sam's pursuit in chapter 11. Hmm, I wonder why they showed this off at E3 2015. Because it's sick! From the beginning getaway with Sully to literally anything else, the section is just a straight up masterpiece. But I can't really explain why thoroughly, so let me just tell you, it's pretty goddamn exhilarating. And honestly, who wouldn't think the same? No seriously, who wouldn't? I know this is where I said the game peaks, but let me just tell you, there are many other extravagant moments in the game. But the question is still there, 
how good is Uncharted 4? The game's combat is just so great. It's much more improved from the past games in the franchise. And so is the platforming. The platforming in the other games was alright, but they substantially enhanced it in this game. The baton and sliding make the platforming way better, and the grappling hook makes it a bit too good. And the graphics, oh the graphics. First of all, they're pretty stunning. Also, the fact that these transitions even exist just keeps me up at night, in a good way. And the music. The music is just so mwah. The soundtrack has so much emotion and power, and it's not just a few select tracks. It is quite consistent, and the music is just so wonderful in general, similar to the quality of the story. It should be illegal to even skip a single cutscene, punishable by death, because the game presents a story with so many engaging and powerful moments, alongside its likeable characters. It's probably my favorite story in any game. Not saying much considering I'm a Still, it's still a remarkable story. And oh boy does this game have incredible highlights. The set pieces in this game are really memorable for a reason, but I seriously wonder why. So yes, I really love this game, but how much do I really enjoy it? I'm just gonna say it, Uncharted 4 might be my favorite game of all time. And if not, it's in my top 2 alongside Mario Odyssey. Seriously, if you haven't played the game or don't plan to, then what's wrong with you?